What is your pH? Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today we are discussing pH. Now, first of all, thank you very much, everybody. We are almost on 10,000 subscribers. Now, that's amazing with my birthday being tomorrow or today when the video gets uploaded. I'm very excited about that. So, yeah, let's see if we can get to that 10K mark. So, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. And as always, leave a comment down below for the questions we'll be answering today will be four of them. Now, the first question will be, what is pH? We'll be discussing what pH is. Number two will be why it is important to be able to check as well as adjust your pH. Number three, why I don't really care about pH. And number four, how to adjust your pH. Remember to stick around to the end to see what you can adjust your pH with. Let's get into the first question. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of depth on what pH is. I think everybody has a broad understanding of what pH is, but it's basically a scale that goes from 0 to 14 as represented on the screen right now, with 0 being something that's extremely acidic and 14 being something that is very alkaline or base with seven being nice and in the middle, and that should be referred to as neutral. Now, generally people would assume that water is a neutral uh, when it comes to the pH, so that is the gauge we use. So pure water at 25 degrees centigrade should be pH neutral. Now, when we are distilling, pH is quite important, or when you are doing your fermentation, pH is quite important because that will determine the health of your uh, fermentation but more about that when we answer the questions in number two or question number two the scales ranges from zero up until 14 each of those digits so if you go from a ph of seven down to a ph of six you are actually increase or yeah increasing the amount of hydrogen ions within that solution by 1000 times so yes pH stands for the amount of hydrogen with or hydrogen ions within the solution. Different substances have different pHs, but pH can only be measured once it is dissolved in water. So if you take sugar, for instance, standard table sugar um, has a natural pH of 7. Theoretically, when you add sugar into water, you should not be having any pH changes because Sugar is a non-ionic compound, meaning it is not going to give away, give away or take away some of those hydrogen atoms inside or the hydrogen ions within the wash that will either increase or decrease the pH. Now, if something gives hydrogen ions away, meaning it's increasing the number of hydrogen ions within the solution, you will be having a decrease in pH. If it is consuming hydrogen ions, uh, making it less within the wash, then you will be having a pH that goes up. So yeah, it's quite interesting to think about that. More means a lower pH and less means a higher pH. Let's move on to question number two. Why is pH important? Now, pH is important for a few different reasons, but for me, the main reasons are as follow. First and foremost, the health of your fermentation. Now, when I talk about the health of your fermentation, what I mean is, so in the bucket over here, we have our orange brandy. Now, the orange brandy, we started making on the channel. The recipe link will be up here. One of those washes where it is very important for you to be able to check your pH. Now, because we use oranges during the fermentation or, make, or the making of this recipe, and orange, oranges, oranges, lemuna, contains a lot of citric acid it tends to take your ph down a lot so you want to be able to bring your ph back up again because your yeast doesn't like anything with a ph below three 
your yeast will tend to go either very slow or even die out completely depending on what yeast strain you have. So in a orange or a lemon brandy that we are making here, we want to be able to lift our pH up again to make sure the yeast has a nice healthy environment to actually do their job and consume the sugars and produce alcohol. Now the next reason why I believe pH is a very important thing to monitor except for the health of your fermentation is as well as the flavors that you're going to get or the flavors that your yeast will produce while chewing through the sugars. Now we all know if you put your yeast under strain they tend to produce some funky off flavors that you don't want. So to maintain your, ye uh, your pH balance and maintain that consistent flavor profile that you're looking for it is very important that you manage your pH. So the ideal pH numbers you are looking for is anything from 4 to 6. Within that ballpark range, your yeast should be nice and comfortable and be able to chew through sugars without producing funky flavors. Now for the third and the final reason why I think it's important to be able to maintain your pH while you are fermenting as well as when you are distilling is to prevent your distillate from going blue. Now this doesn't always happen but you do get that every now and then that your distillate turns blue. Now for me in my case the only times that has happened is if I was distilling something that had a very low pH so something that's extremely acidic. So just to illustrate that what I did is I took four jars and I poured a little bit of water into them and then added a piece of copper into the water. Now this water here is at a pH of 7.5 if I'm not mistaken when I tested the pH and uh, yeah as you can see there's no reaction that happened there. The water is still crystal clear as well as the copper hasn't tarnished or changed color in any way. If we now go up in the pH scale meaning we are increasing our pH and becoming more base or more alkaline what I did is I did the same experiment with water all I did is added bicarbonate of soda okay or bicarb into the liquid or into the water and kept on stirring it up until the bicarb doesn't want to dissolve anymore there's so much bicarb dissolved in the water that it's actually forming little crystals but once again there is no discoloration of the liquid it's still nice and clear it does have a slight blue tint to it now if we go and we change over to stuff that is more acidic in nature like our um, wash will be when we put it into the still here we have some vinegar now vinegar has a ph of around 2 to 2.5 and this has changed the liquid into a blue tint so that is sulfides or copper sulfide that you see within the liquid now and that can turn your distillate blue when the vapor interacts or the acidic vapor interacts with your column when you are distilling. Same thing happens with a solution of citric acid and water with copper in it again. So you'll see the liquid has turned a light shade of blue. So those are the three points that I think it is important to take into account when you want to be adjusting your pH. Now to the question why I don't care about pH. Now it's not that I don't care about pH or that I don't check my pH. It's just that the water I use is actually very special. Now the water is obtained from an area that is very rich in limestone. Now limestone releases calcium carbonate into the water. The calcium carbonate then inhibits the rise and fall of the pH of the, the solution. Thus, I don't really need to care about adjusting my pH because my water that I use will stay stable around a 6 to a 7 pH constantly. And if I want to bring that pH down a lot, I need to add a ton of adjusters to get my pH to get to below a 6. So even with my lemon brandy that I did, we'll put a link up here, that pH at the end of the day 
even after adding a ton of lemons into that wash, my pH only dropped to a 5. Now during fermentation as well, your pH of your wash drops as well. The reason for this is because of a couple of reasons, but the main one is the fact that that interaction of the yeast chewing up the sugars releases more of those hydrogen ions and thus it is dropping your pH. Now if you're going into washes like rums or brandies uh, or fruit has natural citric acid in it, that will force your pH to go down. So you need to then readjust your pH up to keep that yeast chewing up the sugars. Now Bearded and Boar did a video where he had to constantly adjust his pH for his agave uh, run or his tequila run that he made. Um, link a video up here where he had to bring the pH up to just maintain fermentation. So I'm lucky enough that my water has a built-in buffer. So it's not that I don't care about pH, it's just that I don't really have to worry about it. Fourth point that I want to get to when it comes to the pH is how to adjust your pH. The answer is not as clear cut as you might think. Keeping in mind that if you're going to be using distilled water, you're going to have something that's completely neutral and it's quite easy to adjust your pH. But if you're going to use bottled water or store-bought water, they might have deposits of minerals inside of the water that will act like buffering agents and you will struggle to get your pH to rise, especially if you have a very mineral rich source of water. First of all, how do you test for your pH? Well, I don't have a fancy pH tester. I just have a standard pH strip tester. These are nice little strips that you can pick up from Prohibition Home Brewers. I'll put a link down to these strips in the description. They're relatively inexpensive. You dip them in the water and you line up the little tab with the colors and then you adjust your pH accordingly, either up or down. Now the question is, what do you adjust your pH with? Well, common sense says that if you want your pH to go down, you need to add something to make it go down. So here I have citric acid. As you can see, I haven't used it in a very long time, but the citric acid will allow my pH to go down. Now, if I add too much citric acid in the beginning of the fermentation and my pH, and I overpower those buffers within my solution, as soon as the fermentation kicks off and that pH starts dropping again because of the dissolved CO2 in the liquid, yeah, I'm going to have to pick it up again. Now, how do I pick it up? You can reach for bicarb of soda. Now, I wouldn't suggest bicarb of soda. The reason for that is if you're going to add this stuff in, you might just end up with a funky flavor. If you take, for example, a turbo yeast, one of the funky flavors that you get from turbo yeast is because of the buffering agents they use within the turbo yeast to prevent your pH from plummeting into the ground when it is fermenting at that rapid speed with that ton of nutrients within that solution. Now, what do I suggest to use? Well, it's quite simple. Get your hands on some pH stabilizers. Now, pH stabilizers is something that's used in the brewing industry or the home brewers use it quite often. And this is used to stabilize the pH or maintain a pH range within the fermentation as well as during the mashing and making of your recipe. So uh, all you do is you're gonna add the recommended amount. For this, it's one tablespoon of the pH stabilizer to a 20 liter wash. And this will maintain your pH at 5.2. This is actually just a very complex mixture of buffering salts. This will not affect the flavor of your wash and it will not interfere when you are distilling it. Where bicarb of soda, especially with very low pH washes, you might just pick up some of that fishy bicarb taste that you do not want. So my suggestion for maintaining a pH is get some pH stabilizers. They're relatively inexpensive and they act as a buffer. Instead of playing around with the pH, use a pH stabilizer. So yeah, that's my 10 cents worth of pH. If you have any further questions regarding pH and maintaining or upping or downing your pH, um, yeah, 
hit it down in the comment section and I will gladly get back to you. And as always, have a lack of day.